Okay. So then you continue uh, in the ECW. Uh, I guess you formed the, the Gangstonators in 97. There was some fans that came up with that name. I never called myself the Gangstonator. There was some fans that came up with that stupid. Okay. Uh, and then by 99, you were feuding with the Dudley Boys. Yeah. I mean, how was that whole experience in ECW after that whole situation? I mean, the man trainer thing died down. You know, and I went back to being New Jack and doing what I was well known to do. And everybody went on went on their merry way, you know. Okay. Uh, and then we fast forward to 2000. There was the, the Living Dangerously uh, pay-per-view in Connecticut. And you had a match against Vic Grimes. Right. Talk about that situation. Paul, he wanted me and Vic to go through a table. Well, through two tables. And I was cool with it. I wasn't, I wasn't cool with going through two tables because I just, it was a hazard. It was, it was a, to go through one table is easy, but to try to go through two, you don't know if the table gonna slip off the, t- off the top table or what, and you, you don't know where you gonna fall, where you gonna land. So I didn't want to go through two, but he went on and said, well, Jack, "Just go through two, and everything will be fine." So I was like, "All right." I was like, "All right, just we'll, we'll do that." So Vic Jazz, when I went and talked to him, he was like, "I said, did you go and check the scaffold out?" He was like, "Yeah, I went and checked it out." I said, "Is it okay?" Because I was running late because it was snowing, and he was like. Yeah, I checked it out and everything's fine. So we ought to be all right. I'm like, all right. So when it came time for us to go off the scaffold, we got up top. And Vic didn't want to go. And I was like, Vic, let's go on three. And he was like, and then we having this conversation on pay-per-view, on, on, on TV live. You know what I mean? And he was like, Jack, I can't go. It's too high. I said, we going? He said, I can't, it's too high. So I just pulled him down and he landed on top of me and his, he did a flip and his back leaned up against my head and it slammed my head into the floor. And I cracked my skull. So from that fall, you had a broken leg, a skull fracture, right. brain damage, right. permanent insomnia, right. permanent blindness in your right eye. Right. So you can't see out of your right eye at all? No. Okay. Uh, was was the scar on your forehead, did that come from, from that situation? No. I cracked the back. I cracked my head in the back. The scars on my forehead, that was just years of cutting my head. Okay. So you have this horrific fall. And uh, how long were you in the hospital for? Months. Months. You, I guess... It was memory loss and, and really bad headaches and everything else like that? Yeah. How mad were you when you when you basically woke up in the hospital? I was pissed off. You know what I mean? I was pissed off. You know? And then it went a time he didn't try to he he didn't call me to see how I was doing or nothing. The mother let me sit there, you know? And I was sitting at home in the dark. You know what I mean? And when I went back to ECW, I walked up to Vic and I punched him in the guy's face. You know, and I was like, you know, because I mean, I was pissed. You know what I'm saying? Uh, okay. What was what was that first reaction when you guys came face to face after that situation? I mean, apart from the face punching, he was like, "Jay, I didn't mean to do it. I'm sorry. I, I, I apologize. I didn't mean to do it. You know what I mean?" But he had went for months and he didn't even call me. He never got in touch with me, and I was upset about it. Okay. Was that the worst injury you'd ever had in your life? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then in 2001, ECW declared bankruptcy. Right. So where was your career at that point? I went, I went on the indie circuit. And just started right. taking boogies and traveling around, you know, around the world, just doing my shows still. Okay. So then, then in uh, February 2002, you and Grimes have have a rematch. Right. 
and uh, you guys decide to to jump off of a forty foot scaffolding. Yeah. Okay. Before before this, what was the highest jump you've ever done? Thirty five feet. Thirty five feet. Okay. Is this considered completely? unusual in the wrestling world or do people do this on a regular basis N- nobody ever did it nobody ever i got the highest jump on record to this day 35 feet 35 feet but with this uh, the scaffold i threw vic off of the scaffold it was 40 feet okay now explain to someone who really doesn't know too much about this how a human being f- literally falls off 35 to 40 feet into a bunch of tables and walks away he was lucky. Right, no, no, no. I'm saying like on, on a tip, not that particular match because I want to get into that. But in, on a typical match, you're talking about jumping. I mean, even 15 feet is pretty damn high. But you're talking about 15, 20, 30, 35 feet. You fall and what? The tables break your fall? Well, he was supposed to fall through the tables. But I threw him past the tables. So he just clipped one. He just He barely hit one table. And and he fell and he landed on on, on the ropes. Okay, and that's what broke his fall. In that particular situation with the forty foot drop, there were twelve tables stacked on top of each yeah. other. Yeah. So the idea was he fell on the first one; they were all kind of collapse and and break the fall. That's what was supposed to happen, but it didn't happen because I threw him over the table. Okay, was that in re- retaliation for what he did? Yeah. Okay. And had he fell a little bit over, he would have been dead. Yeah. Okay. Were you trying to kill him? Yeah. Okay. Was he just totally terrified when you pushed him off at that point? (laughs) He was like, Jack, I can't feel my legs. I had a stun gun I bought. I went and bought a stun gun. So we was up on the, t- on, on the scaffold. I started tasing him. And he was like, Jack, I can't feel my leg. I said, you ain't gonna need him. And I threw him. I'm like, bombs away. And the motherfucker hit the table. He, he clipped the table. And then he hit the ropes and fell back in the ring. Okay. And I guess he ultimately didn't really hurt himself that much. I guess he dislocated his ankle yeah. and a couple other small injuries. Yeah. But falling off 40 feet like literally being thrown 40 feet off the air. I mean, that's, that's just a, the act of God right there, the fact that he's not dead or, or seriously crippled. Yeah. Okay, and was that the, the biggest fall in, uh, in wrestling history? Yeah. 40 feet. Yep. Okay. When you're standing up there and, and, and you, you look down 35, 40 feet, what, what actually gets you to, to, to do that to do that slam or that jump at that point? I mean, we had planned it. So he knew he was going. He just didn't know where he was going to land. And I threw him, and he landed. Like I said, he clipped one table, and he hit the ropes and fell back in the ring. You know what I mean? But I didn't give a where he landed. I, I, I wanted to die. Okay. What was the conversation like afterwards? There wasn't one. There wasn't one. There, there wasn't one. So, so that was it. Basically, after that, you never spoke again. Nope. Okay. Did he ever speak about it publicly? Somebody said he went on uh, Hannibal TV and was leaving comments after the, the, the interview I did last well, two weeks ago with Hannibal, and they said that he was commenting about the fall or whatever. You know what I mean? But he never said anything to me.